Thanksgiving dinner. It's very fun. Do you do it by yourself? Yeah, do, usually I just I just keep everybody out and take Wednesday off and just cook all day Wednesday. So what are your usual dishes? So so we do turkey and I make a cornbread stuffing which I'm about to assemble and then we do um, squash and put baked potatoes but not baked potatoes mashed potatoes and a mashed squash and green beans almondine which I'll be putting together to those tomorrow before the feast so today is pie day because that's the stuff you have to do in advance so we're do, gonna assemble an apple pie we're gonna make cornbread for cornbread stuffing and I'm going to put together a pumpkin pie a mincemeat pie that's mock mincemeat made with green tomatoes and a pecan pie because I went to college down south and you have to do pecan pie down south. They don't do any meal without pecan pie for a formal dinner. Okay, so. Lots of cornmeal, good, good cornmeal. If you use the recipe on the on the side of the Quaker box, you have to double it to to use a skillet. So this is how I learned to bake cornbread down south. Use the hot oil. So it. You heat, so the oil's heated up in the pan that you're going to cook it in the oven in. And what that does is it not only heats the oven up, but it gives you that crisp edge on your, in your dough. I just love fresh pumpkin and it freezes really well. We're going to make mock mincemeat pie, green tomato mincemeat. And mincemeat in its traditional form actually does have meat in it. So this one, they use the tomatoes are actually used as that sort of filler space that the mincemeat was. So you start with a cup and a half of raisins. Bake it 450, 10, bake about 20 minutes longer. What is that? So this is the eggs and the sugar for the pecan pie. Or as they say in the South, pecan pie. A pecan is a can you piss in. Do pecan or pecan taste any different? Do pecans and pecans taste any different? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that all depends on who you are. <laughs> you add the pecans, so you've got... Hi, and welcome to Somerville Producers Group Thanksgiving Feast. We've pre prepared today a feast of what's my family's traditional 
Thanksgiving. What our show is going to be about today is not only eating this feast, but also watching tapes of how immigrants and other people celebrate Thanksgiving in the United States. It's interesting because it's a feast that's very family oriented. We don't see a lot of decorations outside. We don't see a lot of music. It, it was interesting trying to find anything that has Thanksgiving music and there's not much of it. So we're going to listen to how immigrants, both new immigrants and immigrants that have been around for quite a while, actually celebrate Thanksgiving, the things that they bring from their traditions into the feast. Um, and I want to I want to show you a little bit of what I have here. We'll get to the pies later, which you just finished watching me cook yesterday. Um, so so we have in in the feast today for the we have a few olives, of course, and a few roasted pumpkin seeds, to just because we have to go with it, and some shortbread biscuits, mashed potatoes. I didn't mash the sweet, the sweet potatoes, so we have plain sweet potatoes. We have celery that is, has roca cheese spread in it, because that's what we used to do. It's my favorite way to eat celery. I'm not a big celery fan, um, but we could never make enough of that in my family for Thanksgiving Day. And cranberry sauce, cooked cranberry sauce that takes about 10 minutes to cook on the stove, a cup of sugar and a cup of water and cranberries, and it's the easiest thing in the world. It's practically easier than opening the can of jellied sauce. And then in the turkey, I actually put, oh, we have, before we get to the turkey, I have string beans almondine, which is the classic string beans with the mushroom sauce and the roast toasted almonds on top. My mother didn't like turnips, so we never had turnips, for those of you that, that um, lived through turnips on Thanksgiving Day. In my turkey, um, I put cornbread stuffing. I went to college down south, and I was never a big stuffing fan. So when I found out about cornbread stuffing, I just discovered the best stuff in the world. And you actually saw me make the cornbread yesterday because you have to do cornbread that's a little bit stale, just the way you use sort of older bread for white bread. So we're going to make cornbread stuffing. Some of my guests are going to be arriving and we're going to eat. What I wanted to start with for a tape tonight is we're going to show some of the farmers market over in Davis Square and we interviewed some of the farmers. Talk about why they farm. So they produce all this great food for all of us to eat and be thankful for, but they're not making a whole lot of money, so they must be doing it for some other reason. So we're going to go to a tape right now that talks about why farmers actually farm. <laughs> the taste, in my opinion, is all pretty much the same. The same. It's really just the color difference. It seems like organic farming is something which is about bringing the best quality food to people. And um, I started working on this farm from my own personal love for farming and wanting to have fresh quality food, which, you know, especially is tough not affordable to a lot of people so you know working on a farm is great because you have this bounty of unlimited produce in front of you and the man who I work for who runs the farm I think he decided really to get into organic farming because you know it, it gives him a chance to uh, do something he loves but also provide you know like a service for the community by bringing food bringing food that is wholesome you know it just never really gets any better than when it's fresh picked yesterday and on your, you know, dinner table tonight and relates to Thanksgiving if you look at New England this time of year, you know, a lot of things that are traditional menu items on people's Thanksgiving tables like squash, for instance, it's one of the only things that is left in November, you know, you pick all your squash right before the frost time and then you're storing it and then you have such a excess of squash sitting around maybe in your root cellars or you know your basements or something this time of year and so everyone's going to make squash and pumpkin pies and whatnot I think those are things that have always been eaten since the first Thanksgiving and 
It just kind of correlates to the harvest. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Hi. I mean, it's about a two hour ride from us, for us, each way out from where we are. But um, at the same time, you know, the business out here, um, hopefully, you know, on its good days, is, is, is busy enough for us to make it worth our while to travel this far. Mm -hmm. we, we do a market on um, Saturdays in Northampton, where um, that's, that's more of our local area, but, um, you know, it's only one day a week, and here in Boston there's a market every single day, so it offers just greater flexibility for selling your product. You know, there's a greater market out there. There's more restaurants, more people getting out and going shopping and everything. This farm sort of aims to be involved more with it. So, you know, having a direct market access to our customers instead of selling to a middleman where, you know, we're selling, you know, a case of produce which gets marked up two, three, and four times by all these different middlemen and then X purveyor brings it to X restaurant and two months later you're eating some chard in a restaurant for, you know, a $30 dinner where you could have bought a dollar fifty bunch at a farmer's market, Yeah. you know, so that's something that we sort of aim to bring food really fresh, really nutritious to the people. We're certified by NOFA, the Northeast Organic Farming Association, and to be certified through them, it's actually a pretty... Um, it's a pretty intense process. There's a lot of rules and regulations, a lot of red tape, although, it, you know, it's definitely a good thing. Um, I guess, from my understanding, you know, we, um, we go so far as to not only use just, <laughs> just chemicals, well, <laughs> The thing is, it's not just about like not using pesticides and, and not using chemical fertilizers. It's more encompassing like a whole practice um, of organic farming that really strengthens the soil so that, you know, you're always in what you do, you know, enriching your soil instead of depleting it using like crop rotation. I mean, we have maybe like a dozen fields and, and the guy who really runs the farm strategically is plotting out what can be planted in what field in a sequence such that, you know, nightshades aren't planted within a, a gap of like four years or seven years in the same piece of land. Whereas tobacco farmers and corn farmers are putting their product in the same land every year, season after season. So that soil is so depleted. I mean, if you look at any tobacco field right now where it has been reaped and harvested and they plant a cover crop, it's completely burned because the soil has just been toxified there. I mean, in addition to like using, you know, fish fertilizer on our transplants in the greenhouse in the spring, we also use like all organic locally produced fertilizer in the fields. Right. And we're using, you know, rotation all the time. And we may, maybe in one field, we'll have a spring planting of lettuce and then like a summer planting of something like um, spinach or chard and then or, or squash, and then like a fall spinach. You know, sometimes we turn over every piece of land three times so that we can maximize like our acreage in the season. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have an idea how many people the 80 acres can feed? You know, we calculated last year, like if you calculated, you know, um, how many boxes we sold, and then how many um, pieces of produce go in a box, I think it was something like like two million servings of produce in one season, or like two hundred million. It was a huge wow. number. I mean, sometimes uh, you know we can pick three hundred cases of lettuce a day in the middle of the summer mm -hmm. if the demand is there. But knowing that, like I said, we turn over each piece of land multiple times throughout the season, you know, I think it gives us, um, or it's a sense of efficiency. Like organic farming is really not about taking shortcuts at all. It's about doing everything. Like I wouldn't say the hard way always, but it requires a lot more effort, you know. And that's sort of sometimes I think a metaphor for life, you know. If you want something to be really good and really quality and worthwhile, you have to put work into it. And but then you reap what you sow, and that's what organic farming is about. You can't just give it miracle grow and let it, you know, let it happen. You can't just like spray something to make, make the weeds go magically away. You have to get out there and you have to pull the weeds. And, right. But then you know you get some great crops out of it. Sometime in the last 50 or 100 years, uh, you know, 
or it's been a progressive thing where it just get bigger and bigger and bigger because the profit margins are so small that the from everywhere from the farmers to the processing plants have just kept growing and growing to try to I mean, if your profit margin is tiny then obviously to make a lot of money you have to do more volume and so so how's the, the decision to join the farmers market and bring your product directly to the to the consumers here local for us uh, how's how's that work compared to wholesale? well our option if we didn't do our own retail would be to sell to raise cows to raise the cattle and then sell the calves you'd sell them to a live market sell the live calves to an auction and they would end up going out west to be fed up at these feedlots and there your profit margin might be like say you make well if you're lucky you make 50 or 100 dollars a calf you know um, this way there's a lot more costs involved in bringing the meat to market, but the you know the profit margin. There's a lot more. The profit margin might, like percentage-wise, might be you know close to the same thing. But you actually you're making more work. We're making more work for ourselves. You know, there's only so much you can do if you're just raising calves and sending them to the feedlots out west. Then that's all you can do. And if you have a limited amount of land, then, you know, here in the Northeast, you can't, you know, we can't compete with those guys out West. So they're raising, they might be able to make it when they sell, you know, by selling the calves, because at $50 a calf, well, if you have 10,000 calves every year, well, it adds up. But here we can't compete with that. So we have to come up with other ways to make money. And for us, that would be, following it through right to the retail market and cutting out all the other guys, the middle guys, right. and... Um, giving the cows some lifestyle. Given, and in the meantime, giving the cows some lifestyle. I was living in San Francisco and just thought, wouldn't it be great to work on a farm? So I went to Maine, and there's a program called MAFTA there, mm -hmm. the Maine Organic Farmer and Gardener Association. It's a huge apprenticeship program. They have farms all over the state, different kinds of farms. I worked on a five-acre CSA, Community Supported Agriculture. Mm -hmm. So we had 50 shareholders, and there were horses, and sheep, and chickens, and turkeys. And so we learned how to take care of animals, and grow food and we learned how to can and jar and store food free stuff and make uh, cheese and mm. I don't know, all different kinds of stuff, applesauce, tomato sauce, stuff that I just never did as a kid. We never had a garden. We never grew anything. The only thing we ever had was rhubarb that was already grown when we moved into a house. Right. I just never, I didn't know how to grow anything. And there I was living in a city, just buying my food every week and I always liked to eat a lot of vegetables and just thought it'd be fun to learn how to grow stuff and be able to grow my own food. So this isn't your first Good year stuff. here at the farmer's market? You've no, this is my third year here. Mm -hmm. But I've been working at this farm for five years. There's a huge wholesale operation. It's a 90-acre organic farm. So there's a very small percentage of that that is actually sold to farmer's markets. But uh, the markets that we do sell to, we pick everything the day before that is perishable. Other things like potatoes have been out of the field for probably a month now and you can store them in cold storage and squash has been out of the field now uh, but everything else we pick the day before and we bring it to the market and whatever doesn't sell like at this market and other Boston markets what is it called food for free food for free food for free comes and picks everything up and then they give it to people or do they sell it to people I'm not they even sure they bring it and drop it off to, uh, um, to food pantries it used to be a part of food not bombs they bring food pantries. We sometimes have like 10 crates of, okay. you know, vegetables, which would be like between 180 and 250 bunches of greens, yeah, all different have, kinds, and it'll just be left over. So instead of just like bringing it back and composting it, we just give it to the people who come pick it up. So it's a great system that they have set up for us, really. Mm -hmm. Not that it's that hard to load up the truck with the things, but it's, I'd much rather give it to somebody and know that it's going to other people who can't afford to necessarily buy it for themselves. So that's a nice little part of it.
Yes, yes. How much is this Ah. Uh, three, four, two. Maybe I didn't have I had to chase down four people. Wait, lady! Ma'am! how the farmers think about what they do and how they deliver this food to us and the ways that they can be delivered to us. So we're going to go back to the Thanksgiving theme and talk to Joe, who stopped by to visit us, and we convinced him to come and eat some food, and Rachel and Ted. So some of my guests have joined me, and we'll have a few more guests a little bit later on. So Joe, how did you, your family do Thanksgiving? as a kid? Um, much like this. Yeah. It was uh, all the same um, items. There was the, the turkey, the, the similar stuffing my mother always made, and cranberry sauce, and green beans, and mashed potatoes, and like this, a lot like, like this. this. Yeah. And just basically a family, a family event, just eating food. Eating food, and oh, but we're missing football. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we there watched has to a be little. A game on there has to be a game on somewhere, yeah. huh? <laughs> 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 well, I think there'll be plenty of football between now and Thanksgiving. So, Ted, how'd you celebrate Thanksgiving? Well, we celebrated it by eating, as uh, our family learned about the American way of life. It was really an interesting experience because there were seven kids and my two parents, and then we often had other relatives over, and uh, it was a big. We'd put all the tables together in the kitchen. Uh -huh. And it was a real feast. Uh, I look, I have terrific memories of it. Uh, Did you have any food that you brought over with you? Oh, and we had all the delicacies. We had uh, uh, the turkey, a standard turkey, but then we had a lot of Greek fare around it. There was lots of feta cheese and olives and stuff, but then there'd be lamb. She'd cook a lamb uh -huh. and uh, uh, a lot of other Greek traditional foods, you know, dolmadas yeah. and things like that. It was really terrific. Great. I, yeah, so, so turkey seems to keep being the theme, but, mm. but then everybody adds whatever they want. And I think mm -hmm. we'll hear some more of that today. Mm -hmm. So Rachel, and how did your family do? Well, actually, similarly to Ted's, we never cooked turkey because there were only four of us. Mm -hmm. um, and we lived up in Maine, and the rest of my family was down um, more in the New York area. So for the four of us, a turkey was too large. So mm -hmm. we would make lamb. Actually, also none of us liked um, <laughs> the leftover turkey for weeks and weeks, so we would have lamb. Okay. So you you did the la the tape that we're going to go to. So you want to introduce that tape, which talks more about people. Sure. Um, so I decided to um, talk to some international people to find out what they knew about Thanksgiving and if and how they celebrate it. So I talked to people who've been here for different lengths of time and. Um, Hopefully, people will find it interesting. While we eat. <laughs> While we eat, yeah. Can I take a nap after this? I need to take a nap <laughs> yeah, after okay. I, the, the pillows are in the other oh. room with the football. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to go to the tape now and watch, see how other people celebrate Thanksgiving.
Carolina Cachucho da Silva. I'm from Venezuela. Caracas, Venezuela. I'm Yumi Izuyama and I'm from Japan. I've been here um, for a little bit over four years. My name is May Arthur. I'm from Iraq. I've uh, been in the country for 19 years now. Well, I don't know exactly what's the mean of Thanksgiving, but I hear that it's an important day for American people. And I think the only day that the whole family meet and they eat a lot, <laughs> principal turkey, and a lot of desserts. It may have been different from what it is today, but what do you guys know about Thanksgiving? Anything? Do you know when it is? <laughs> yeah, 21st of November. No. I think it's the 22nd. 22nd. I got introduced to the Thanksgiving tradition through my uncle who had already lived in the country for about uh, 20 years or so. And it was, uh, my involvement was very small. Uh, all I had to do is show up and go to somebody's uh, house uh, for Thanksgiving. So in the beginning, um, the meaning of it to me was uh, that it was a long weekend and we had to leave uh, dorms because there was no food service. As I see, it's an occasion for families to get together and um, maybe to f find what you um, are thankful, thankful for. What is the meaning of Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. Giving thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 it's so clever. Yes, no? Thanks. Oh, yeah, it is, Giving no? Giving thanks to the Indians. It's to, it's from giving, the original it's Americans it's that were here, mm -hmm. and, and they, they had they, they <laughs> the pilgrims. That's true, but it was also to celebrate that they had a successful harvest. That's what the story says. I mean, historically, I guess it's, it's a, it has um, the native Indian history behind, um, but uh, it doesn't seem like it has much link with I don't know the practice now. In my family, we don't specifically thank the Native Americans for anything. <laughs> yeah. That's what I heard. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. that, that the Native Americans help uh, those pilgrims to survive. Mm -hmm. So, and That's they get way. together in the table and they had like the first time, like a dinner, like a. Slowly, I mean, I understood uh, the idea behind it, that it was um, a time for people to get together and uh, eat a lot of food, in, including a big turkey. Um, and without really any kind of uh, formal uh, research on the subject or really reading up on it, you kind of get the idea that it's a time where people are going to get together. It's a celebration happens to be around the time where maybe there's a harvest. I think it has changed yeah. meaning. Um, probably because yeah, because people forget because about, they forget they about the Native they, American. Yeah, because mm -hmm. a lot of people, I think, I think not all people, American people know, but they make celebrate uh, Thanksgiving party, but I think they don't know what it means uh, for the party. Mm -hmm. For who? Yeah, I think for themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think Thanksgiving should be? Do you have an idea? Thanks what for my be? job. <coughs> thanks for your job. Mm -hmm. well, thanks for everything. Mm -hmm. It's an opportunity to have a long weekend. That's good. You have to thank that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an important day here because it's a long weekend, no? Mm. Yeah. You take like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And for you, I think it's a long weekend because my country is normal, but here not. <laughs> <laughs> have any of you been here for that day? Yeah. Really? Last year you were here? Yes, yeah. What happened? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? Nothing? What were you doing? <laughs> I guess it, it is starting to become a, um, almost um, a ritual now um, since I've been doing the same thing for th three years. I always visit a friend who lives in, in New Hampshire um, and she, um, it, she, she receives her family 
and uh, I always go there and spend um, the day and they have this huge turkey and you know we sit together and each person says what um, the, per uh, the person is thanks for or something grateful for or something like that. I think that is going to be my first Thanksgiving this year here. My involvement in the holiday has really changed from the first year I arrived till now. Um, it used to be a great long weekend with some good food and uh, over the years it changed you became more of a family gathering and a time to be able to visit with people you haven't seen for a while. You live with an American family. Yeah. And have they talked about Thanksgiving? Have they made any preparations? Yes. No. No. And how about you, Laura? Yeah, what about you guys? We have all my family come over, and we have like the turkey and the pumpkin pie mm -hmm. and cranberry sauce, mm -hmm. mashed potatoes. We need to give it all, your family, all, all, all your family is oh, your father, oh, your, no, your so mother, your, your sister, and my grandparents, grandparents. and sometimes my cousins and aunts. Cousins, aunts, uncles. Mm -hmm. Wow. Normally we are, it depends on the year, but we are about 10 or 11 or something like that. In the last uh, four or five years, it's been um, a very large event, and it's been always hosted in our house, in my house, where I have my sister and his uh, family, uh, her family, and uh, my brother and his family come over, my father comes over. So it's a, been a really new tradition for us, where it's all of a sudden now all the five siblings get together with my father, with all our kids, and we're up to seven little granddaughters for, for my father now. Um, and it's a really, really big, busy day for us. I, ha I haven't listened about Thanksgiving a lot here. Maybe because all the problem about me, Joel, uh, that I think that I only ask people, where are you going to go? Because I know that people meet, and I spoke with teachers, and they are going to his or her family. Uh, but about a store, I didn't see a lot of things yet. Uh, maybe in supermarket, I I look at the balloons that say Thanksgiving or cake. Uh, but mm -hmm. really, I I I saw more from Halloween than from Thanksgiving. I guess the only thing that. I don't know if you would call it advertising, but in terms of at least uh, commercial attraction, um, I, what I noticed was that um, there are some Thanksgiving dinners, very sort of kind of fancy Thanksgiving dinners that you can, um, uh, that they, you know, you pay expensive tickets to go like in Plymouth Plantation and these kind of places. Um, which I, I would associate to something more, um, you know, related to commercial, uh, using, using the holiday to a commercial p purpose in a way. Particularly in my head, it just signals the coming of the holiday season, mm -hmm. um, Christmas for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, that's the tradition that I was brought up in. And I just get excited and I start thinking about being with my family and just remembering songs from my childhood and um, and I do like the food of Thanksgiving, I really do. There was one Thanksgiving that um, I stayed with um, this uh, friend who um, came from Algeria and we made a Thanksgiving dinner right in this, at the this table. <laughs> and, uh, but we didn't cook turkey, we thought it was too big for us so we we just use the chicken instead. <laughs> I know that they eat uh, turkey. The principal is turkey. I think should has been a, a principal idea about that, but I don't know exactly what it is. Um, rice. We don't roast whole chicken in, in Japan, and I, it seems like not in her country either. So, um, we decided to stuff the chicken with something and we decided to do with rice. But we actually didn't know how to do it properly. So we put raw rice inside and it just didn't cook the rice. <laughs> Turkey, sweet potatoes, um, vegetables, some kind of vegetable stuffing. Um, and we have 
pumpkin pie and apple pie. We had some side dishes and the chicken was cooked definitely and we ended up taking the rice out and just cook, cook it with water and... <laughs> Potatoes, mm, salad, a lot of dessert. Where did the pumpkin pie mm. recipe come from? I don't know. Mm. Is it Turkey a uh, native uh, word? I mean, I mean, to the United States? Yeah. <laughs> You're asking too many hard questions. <laughs> In many ways, we have similar holidays to Thanksgiving, but not known as the same thing. They're related to other things. And I think the one that's related the most to it is the one that happens uh, to fall after Ramadan, the one month of fasting. Um, during that month, uh, people fast from sunrise to sundown and eat a larger meal in the evenings. Um, and it's a way, I think, for people to uh, feel how it is like not to have food and be thankful when they do have it and appreciate uh, the others who are around who are less fortunate. Um, the last, uh, once it's over, there is a three-day celebration. And the three-day celebration, the major focus of it is feasting. It's eating, eating, eating. And so they have uh, for three days, not just one day like we do in Thanksgiving here. Um, and during that time, you will get together with families um, and spend the day together and uh, use another day to visit friends and maybe uh, more distant uh, family members. Is there anything like that and any food in particular that's connected to it? that you can think of in your country? Eating a certain kind of food is more related to New Year, at least that's how I see it. You know, New Year definitely you have a set of um, special foods that you only eat in that ta at the time. And that's true, that's the same eating turkey and, and all of that. Um, is, um, it reminds me of that, you know, you, you always cook the same kind of food for New Year. I think we have a uh, different Paris, but how can I say? <laughs> we celebrate birthdays, um, marriage, um, but principal like Thanksgiving, no. I think the the most common is uh, uh, Christmas Day. That's all people meet in a house or in a restaurant, in a hotel, and they celebrate in Christmas. That's I think the principal. Maybe there is no holiday for only Thanksgiving. But, but we have a celebration. We we also have a celebration, only celebration, not holiday, mm -hmm. for the food or for raining because we are it need very necessary for farm. Yeah. So I don't really think so. Um, in terms of maybe getting together as as family, you know, maybe New Year is definitely that kind of holiday. We have a second one uh, that's a little larger uh, holiday, which happens to fall two months after the first one. Um, and in that one, you really uh, try to show that you appreciate uh, what you have by sharing some of the wealth, by giving food to the poor, the less fortunate people. Uh, you are supposed to, you know, um, have a whole uh, sheep killed and give all the meat is given away. You don't keep any of it. You don't eat any of it. It's all given away to the poor. You give money away uh, to the mosques. Um, similar things. One day is uh, uh, all people uh, move to some place because the uh, sea, uh, how to say, increase. Uh, so uh, just uh, some people uh, rescue in the uh, top of the mountain and uh, they uh, just bring some food and the uh, sugar and uh, and the beans and the uh, uh, all um, food is a uh, mixed and they cook there is also in the summer um, a period w in which you go back to visit your ancestors and that means your family and you know you go you go to the cemetery grave and so on it's when the spirits your ancestry comes back and visit you uh, and um, so then um, very often there is a collect collective summer holiday the movement reminds me of Thanksgiving a little bit you know because everyone is sort of traveling back to 
their hometown. The people believe that uh, they uh, they live very uh, hard uh, situation. So finally, they rescued some um, uh, some food, mm -hmm. and they make uh, cook. So they eat and uh, continue the life. Mm -hmm. So everybody when they uh, eat this food and remember the, this story. Uh, I listen to my country too because we have a lot of influence from America, uh, from the United States. I'm always when I, when this I know that it's this month, but I always I forgot I forgot uh, which specific day is. But always in the radio you can listen. Today is a uh, Thanksgiving for American people. Uh, yeah, it's very famous day. Do you know, besides the food, what some of the other Thanksgiving traditions are? Well, if I guess, I think it's because you say, I don't know how to say, you are happy or you are, you say thank you because you have food or you, are, you can meet with your family. Um, mm -hmm. You can stay together. There is also one tradition that we do before we eat the dessert in their house. They always do. We have to um, uh, predict the number of dishes of dessert there, there is going to be, and normally there is plenty. So you know, it's like four, five, six, or whatever, uh, and. Um, I don't know, we just, uh, uh, it, it's a little tradition. After the meal, we normally go for a walk. Um, if the weather is not too bad, that's what we do. Um, she lives in um, a pretty countryside. So we go for a walk, we take the dog, and um, um, if the weather is nice enough, we, we try to get to the, to the beach, to the shore. But if not, we just walk around in, in the nearby woods. And um, and then we get back to eat some more. <laughs> so you don't watch football? Uh, no. Is that a tradition? I, don't, I didn't even know that it was a tradition to watch football. Have you heard about the football tradition on Thanksgiving? Mm, that day is that? No. Well, that there is always um, a football game on Thanksgiving Day. And usually after people finish their huge meal, yes. they sit in front of the TV and watch football. But they start that day? The season? Yes. Um, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't follow <laughs> football. Okay. But I know but that it's like football, American? American football. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't know the mean of American football, neither. I, I <laughs> but I didn't know that you have to eat. You go to watch this program and talk to it. Over the years, and it's been kind of a tradition in the family, in my husband's family, that they've always invited uh, international students over um, to their house because they were both professors at the university uh, to, en to enjoy it and celebrate it with them. And I've tried to do the same thing by having some of my students come over and join us for the holiday. I guess I had one bad experience in Thanksgiving. It was the very first year I was here. Um, no, I wasn't really living here yet. I was going back and forth, but I happened to be here during Thanksgiving. And um, I didn't really know anything about Thanksgiving. I, I just I knew that no one was working. And um, so I decided to get together with a woman a friend from Korea and she didn't know anything about Thanksgiving either and so we decided okay we'll get together in Harvard Square and just have maybe a meal and you know do some things together we got there everything was closed and the streets were deserted it was an awful day it was raining and you know it was it just made us feel so miserable <laughs> And there was only one restaurant, as I recall, that was open, and it, it, it just, we just felt very lonely, even though it was good, we had at least each of us. So I remember the next year, when it started to become close to Thanksgiving, I started to get worried what I was going to do on Thanksgiving. Because <laughs> actually my closest friend 
uh, here she always goes back to visit her family. So I can't count on her. And uh, um, but then um, it was then that my friend uh, who lives in New Hampshire um, invited me, and and since then I've been always with her. So I guess uh, <laughs> now I don't worry about it anymore. <laughs> Even. Christmas is not too bad here. I think Thanksgiving is the worst in that sense, that it feels the loneliest, at least in Harvard Square. The nicest thing about it is the fact that it is not related to any kind of uh, religious uh, theme or uh, reasoning behind it. Um, even that these days, I mean, you know, Christmas is not so much for a religious celebration for many people and they just celebrate it, but you still feel, well, you're not really part of it because you don't go, you don't do everything that comes around with the holiday. Um, but then it's giving it, you know, ask my family, it's their favorite holiday. So you end up falling into the culture because of your kids and not so much because, you know, it's something that traditional that you bring with you. Um, because uh, Isabel and Adrienne always ask about Arabic language, about different things, and then they say, but we're Americans, right? Yeah. The only thing that I actually I wished as an experience I could um, I could experience is something more related to um, the real his history of Thanksgiving, which I I I have enjoyed being in in the family, you know, and and um, sharing the meal and the turkey and all of that, but um, the the real link. Uh, in the history with the native Indians, uh, I would love to experience something more related to that, but uh, I don't know how or you know if there is um, something more um, that in that sense, which is not just touristic or you know something like that, but more real. I think by almost not a pressure, but almost just by having a family, you're just it's a given, you're going to end up celebrating a lot of the things that happen in the culture you're living in. Um, I'm sure there are people who are just don't do it, it's not part of their life, but I kind of see it to be difficult because it's such a just, it's such a basic American thing. It's not, not even American, it's just such a basic weekend holiday that everybody I think would do. I can't see how anybody would feel like they didn't want to be part of it, participate in it, or even, you know, uh, do it themselves. Hi, welcome. We've been busy while you've been watching that, that tape. And we've been having fun eating our turkey. And we have a few different guests on, on now. We have Scott and Tim and Mark. Mark's another scat person who was floating around that we dragged onto the set. And Tim and Scott are other members of Somerville Producers Group. So we're going to start with, with Mark and ask you how you, your family celebrated Thanksgiving. Well, <clears throat> there's nothing crazy or special, probably something you know, typical. As far as what everyone has, uh, has have a big meal. Of course, all, you know, kids are off from school, parents are off from work, and so, you know, family just gets to relax, except except for the cooking. And um, it was nice. And let's say when co in college, if there were friends <coughs> at college who were far from home, uh, they could come over and visit and, and have Thanksgiving dinner with us, which was nice to That's share with great. them. And since Thanksgiving doesn't really have a religious a very strong religious connection. You know, anyone could come over and there wouldn't be any baggage or any complications because of that. So it was just nice to be able to, right. to share that. So, it's, so it's be, goes beyond family and just is inviting lots of people mm -hmm. over for food. Did you have any, any um, particular sort of unusual foods that were in your family that beyond, something beyond the turkey and mashed potatoes? Or? Mm -hmm. Pardon, not really. The, I guess there was one thing that might have been at Thanksgiving, may not have been. It was um, a dish which was sort of interesting in, in how food or in a recipe, how people from early generations sort of live on or their presence is there. There was this, a dish called Grandma's Cabbage. It was just a cabbage you know, recipe, but it was uh -huh. something for my grandmother, and it sort of ended, ha ended up having her name on it. And so oh, it ended great. up, so 
you know, she wasn't at the, you know, she wasn't there at the, uh, as we celebrated Thanksgiving, but uh, well, in some ways. Was. Yeah. That's great. So. I, yeah, I think that we all find that we start to put in things, and that's, I think that's what this show really is about. Scott, what do you, what have you done in the Thanksgiving in your family? Well, it's easy to reel back in time and remember hard, slippery shoes and itchy pants. <laughs> you'd have a chance to put on something suitable. And then there would be a, a large gathering of uh, 30 to 50 people. It's a lot. It means there's a lot of kids as well. And I was pretty much the oldest of my generation. So the first hour, I would be the jungle gym. Uh -huh. And then, uh, then I'd be able to, you know, to get to food, and uh, and then later on, dishwashing. So you had more than one turkey if you had thirty to fifty people. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There were. It was usually a pretty good show. Quite a, and, quite uh, a lot. Yeah, and something uh, that I never saw them miss was a chance to have some dry sherry around. Ah, uh, uh, there you go. Something I wouldn't normally see on a on a table. <laughs> on but, a dinner table in the middle of the afternoon. Perhaps. But at Thanksgiving, <laughs> there'd be a little sherry nearby. Good. That's, uh, besides that, everything's here. Okay, Tim. Tim, what, what did you do? You're going to introduce the next tape, but okay. what, what um, did you do? Um, well, growing up, it was pretty very, very similar to this. It was very traditional as far as food goes, turkey, mashed potatoes, stuffing. Um, we get pretty competitive about mashed potatoes in our household every year. Someone else would bring the mashed potatoes over, and we basically have a contest to see who can make the best mashed potatoes. And we would put everything in them from cream cheese to but lots of butter, uh, heavy cream, um, sometimes mayonnaise, sour cream. So it would just. It's gotten pretty out of hand, but they're rich, <laughs> and they're some, some of the best mashed potatoes I've ever had, and that was one of my favorite parts about Thanksgiving at my house. Um, and I guess I'll just go ahead and introduce yeah, the next ahead. clip. Um, I work in a restaurant, and um, I've been in the restaurant industry for about, off and off, for about seven years. And one of my favorite things about working in restaurants is the opportunity to get to meet people from all over the place. I've met people of all walks of life, from different parts of the world, all different ages. Um, and it's a really great people to meet, just, you know, different people from all over the world. Um, and the clip that I'm going to introduce is uh, a good friend of mine, Francisco Samarone. Um, who uh, has uh, probably worked with me for about three years. He's from El Salvador, um, and he's just a really great guy, really great human being. Uh, I've learned a lot from him just from just from about Central America and El Salvador. Um, he's taught me how to speak Spanish. Um, not always the best Spanish, but he's taught me how to speak Spanish. Um, and it was interesting to talk to him and find out what uh, he actually does for Thanksgiving now that he's been in America for about five years. So um, I'll let him explain it, and uh, hope you enjoy it. My name is Francisco Salmeron. Uh, I'm coming from El Salvador in Central America. I'm here in this country for like five years. And I am working here at this restaurant, Salamander. And also I work at, at Metro Restaurant in uh, Port Square, Cambridge. And when I get here to this country, uh, I heard some people uh, talking about Thanksgiving. And it's kind of like uh, one special day basically for, uh, I can say, American people. But now I, I celebrate to them. And I do that every year in my, uh, I can say, in my house. And um, so we, we cook the turkey, we, we got some beers, we got some tequila, we got kind of like a party. And uh, we don't we have, have a lot of fun like that, like that in El Salvador. We cook like a full, uh, kind of like a recipe from El Salvador, and um, it's kind of like a, we do like uh, chicken and rice, some uh, beef soup, stuff like that, and kind of like a traditional uh, drink called uh, or orchata. Kind of, it's kind of like called a morro, morro seed, so we grind out. I want to go back to El Salvador and and tell um, my family there what, what Thanksgiving in the U.S. is. And also I got to 
cook the turkey there and tell them how how is uh, that day in here and yes do we have turkeys in yeah we do have these there well, kind of one or two there not that much we do have the rice pudding kind of like a sweet potato it's something really good and um, sometimes we do a uh, sweet squash future is I want to stay here uh, say two or three more years then go back to my country and um, make some desserts in there uh, be working and then I want to open my own restaurant that's mm -hmm. what I want to do yeah well, I remember that when I that was the first first the first Thanksgiving was in 1995 I think I was my cousin was cooking that thing the turkey and I said to them what is that what that is what is that for and they, they tried to explain to me it's a, it's a Thanksgiving day today so you do this in the US every single year and we do have a lot of fun so I tell them I want to be I want to be on that <laughs> in Macklin, <laughs> Alamander restaurant and also I, I I always like to learn new things all the time learn from kind of like different people um, and I got one thing to say I learned a lot of, a lot of things from Chef Tim Macklin and that helps me well, a lot. One, and one I good think thing I'm right now for me I can say because um, every uh, Thanksgiving I'm thinking about my friends, American guys. I'm thinking about the guys all the time and I say I asked I ask this guy and I said, so what do you guys have for Thanksgiving today? Anything good? And depend what they say. Sometimes I come over to to this guy's house or they come over to my apartment and we got I can say now the parties they're more bigger. <laughs> yeah. That's also though. Hi, welcome back. And now we're ready for dessert. You watched me bake the pies at the beginning. Now you get to watch me eat them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut the, I'm gonna cut these pies up, to, out of the way, so I can introduce them. I gotta show them what the pies are. Oh, Sit down. Oh, <laughs> Here, have some nuts while you're waiting for the pies. So we always had nuts at the end of the day. They always had the shells on them. And I sat one Thanksgiving and cracked nuts for my three-year-old nephew for about an hour and a half he decided he really liked them. So what we have here, we have apple pie um, with my ugly crust and uh, and that's got mix of red apples and green apples in it. And then more tradition from my my southern experiences of going to college down south. So here's the apple pie. So we got to get a few more of the apples in there. So that you want to start with the apple pie, Ted? I love it. There you go. Thank you. And we have pecan pie, which I learned from down south. We didn't have it traditionally in my family. 